Hey guys, what's up? It's Christine Steins here. I should close this computer so I can see a little bit better. I was gonna get all ready, wash my hair, do makeup, all that stuff, and I was like, you know what? Let's just keep it real. <laughs> this is how it ends up looking most days. So. Um, some people might jump on if you don't catch this live no big deal it will be in the group and it'll be saved in here so you can watch it whenever I'll leave it up here till I do the next one so thanks for checking this out I'm gonna try to keep this as short as I can share a little bit of my story how I got started with coaching um, I'm gonna go over some common I say objections but it's like just fears, excuses. It's fears that people justify in their heads by using different things and then kind of walk you through what like a day in the life of a coach looks like. And then at the end of this video, when I get done, I have a short, um, a 12 minute video that'll go into a little bit more detail. Some of the nitty gritty because it's hard to cover all this stuff and I don't want a giant video. So anyways, I made some notes. Um, so if you see me reference them, okay. So, um, my story, how I got started, I found Beachbody. Uh, I need to turn off these notifications. Hang on. These are going to annoy me. I'm like a squirrel. I'll be super distracted. So, okay. Um, um, I found Beachbody after a breakup. I just, uh, broke it on my boyfriend. I remember I was sitting on the, living in this house. I was sitting on that couch right over there. You can't see it, but it's over there. Um, and I was just feeling how you do after a breakup, really depressed and kind of just lost. I was like 35 years old or 34 years old and just feeling like, gosh, life isn't really going how I thought it was going to. Um, and I was feeling very purposeless, if that makes sense. Um, and I, I just, like I said, I didn't have a lot of passion in my life. I just was, well, like I, I was kind of lost. I was just lost. And this breakup was just like the, the thing that brought everything to a head and just made me really realize like I was kind of directionless and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and I think everybody really does crave purpose and passion and, and things like that in their life. Um, knowing we're like making a difference and I didn't have any of that. And I remember I was um, on Facebook, I was scrolling Facebook and I saw a post and I didn't even know who the woman who posted this was. I think it was like a friend of a friend liked it so I happened to see it. Um, and it was about joining this online 30 day fitness group and um, I had never seen a post like that before and I was already really into fitness. I was fairly fit, but I, I, I was still carrying extra weight on me, even though I worked out every day for like an hour and, um, and I ate, like I knew what was healthy and what wasn't, but I could not put it together in a way that actually got me results. And then I'd been in a relationship. So, you know, sometimes you put on a few pounds from being in a relationship. So I was just like, um, you know what, why don't I give this a try? Like what I'm doing isn't getting me anywhere and this is probably like the one thing I haven't tried. Like definitely never done home workouts because I didn't really think that they could work. I never been part of any sort of online group or anything like that. I was like, this is the one thing I haven't done. I'm gonna do this and plus, this will be a really good thing for me to do as I like get over this breakup. This will be a positive thing for me to focus on versus the old Chris would have just gone out and partied and got drunk and made a bunch of bad decisions after a breakup. So it's getting a little bit smarter about it. So I dove into that group. I joined this girl, this woman who I'd never spoken to before in my life. I was like, I'm in, I will do it. Tell me what we need to do. This is exactly what I need. And it was only a couple weeks into it. I started getting results from it that I had not seen in my previous like decades of working out like the two the decade and a half before I hadn't gotten the results that I got after like three weeks of working with this woman and it was home workouts which I didn't think would work following this like nutrition plan loosely and then drinking this superfood shake which I actually really liked because I was already drinking a vegan shake every day just because easy it's good for you but most vegan shakes taste kind of chalky 
and this one was actually good. So that's what I was doing. I was getting results and I remember kind of feeling like, holy crap, like I feel so good. Do other people, like do other people feel this good? Am I, do, uh, am I just the one I didn't know that you could feel this good? Do other people know this? Um, I remember like kind of having those thoughts like have I been missing out this whole time because I feel so great I was feeling confident. I was feeling like all this energy There's like this ripple effect when you start reach when you reach a goal when you start like gaining momentum in your fitness And your the goals that you want it just has this ripple effect in your whole life and your outlook and I was just I was feeling amazing in like every way. I was loving my coach. I was loving this group support that I was getting. Um, it was like this 24 seven support group. Like how could you not reach your goals with 24 seven support? So anyways, and I just like was thinking, I wanna share this with other people cause I felt good. And that's what you do when you like love something, you just naturally kind of wanna tell other people about it, right? Um, and so, that's kind of how my coaching started just from loving what I was doing and wanting to share it. And the other part of it was, um, like I said, I was getting these results and in the past I had kind of gotten a little bit results before, but every time I got close to making progress, I would do something to like sabotage myself and backslide every single time. I don't know if anyone else has ever done that, but that was always me. And so that's why I like, I would kind of yo-yo because I'd start to go, start to get some momentum and then do something to sabotage myself and then start to get momentum and then sabotage myself. And I was like, you know what? I'm done with that. I want this to stick. Like I am not going backwards this time. And I knew, I knew if I called myself a coach that that would be a way that it would force me in like a really good way to level up on my own fitness. Like if you want to teach, if you want to learn something, like the best way they say is to teach someone else, it's exactly the same thing. Like if you want to get really good results with your own fitness, if you want to reach your own goals, help someone else reach theirs. Like you can't help, it, it can't help but push you on your own when you're helping someone else do theirs. Does that make sense? So it was a little bit selfish. Like part of me wanted to share with others, but part of me just wanted to help myself. <laughs> Be, become a coach and I remember my coach when I had first signed up had offered me the opportunity she said hey you can sign up as a coach or you can sign up as a customer and at that time remember I said I just broken up with my boyfriend I was like I'm not trying to be a coach don't talk to me about that I'm just trying to lose a few pounds and get through this breakup but so at that time I wasn't open to it but a little bit later I was like remembering that she said that um and I was just kind of like what was that coaching thing she said like okay, this could actually be something that I could get behind. Like I was loving it. I was someone that was already really into health and fitness. I was feeling lost. I didn't have any passion. Like I had a job that paid me well, but I was like, am I really going to do this job for the rest of my life? Like sometimes you're like, my job's okay. But then you're like, for the rest of your life, like, is that really what you're going to do? I just, when I thought that like I would end my life and I'd be having jobs like that for the rest of my life, that wasn't, that's not how I wanted to be. And I was like, this, this coaching thing, like I could really get behind this. Like this is something that I feel like I could get passionate about. I just started thinking about like, you know, create, well, hang on, I'll tell you about that in a second. So, so that's what I did. So I started to become a coach. I shared uh, before and after my very first post it was this before and after it was just a three-week progression that was it three weeks I didn't have some big transformation I've never had like a lot of weight to lose but I was excited and passionate and I shared that and I invited people to join me and to be honest I didn't have a lot of my close close friends hop on board like I hoped the people that ended joining me first were um, a couple was a, a friend of an ex um, a co-worker um, and then a friend of an ex coworker and my mom. And that was my group. Those were my very first clients. And we went through a program, um, a fitness program together. Day one, I think it was a 21 day program. Day one through day 21, we all went through it together. We did our workouts, we drank our shake, we had our food and we shared about it and we rocked out that group. And that was, that was my beginning of, of my coaching business. Um, and as I did it, I just started to like fall in love with that even more. I was getting messages from girls in my group that were like, I have not worn a bikini 
since before I had Colton, my son, this girl, Cindy said this, um, she's, she, you know, snapping pictures of herself at the beach being like, I, this is like, so not like me that I'm in a two piece right now at the beach. Like, thank you girls. It's all because of you guys and support I get from this group and these programs. Like I was getting messages like that and seeing that happening in our group. And I was just like, I freaking love this. Like, this is awesome. And then I was getting my own results. We're getting even better because of, because I was continuing to do these programs being in the group was holding me accountable. Being a coach was making me push even harder. I was like, I am just really loving this. Like I was finding myself wanting to cut out of my full-time job early so I could get home and work on this coaching business and invite more people to join me because I was just loving it so much. Like I wanted to spend all my time doing it. My friends were like, um, hello, we haven't seen you forever. I was like, I know I just, I'm, I'm loving this new business of mine, which sounds crazy if you're typically, if you're used to working for the man, you know, but when it's your business and it's your baby, you're so excited about it and you just, it's your, it's your little baby <laughs> and it makes you so excited to do it. And, um, it's so rewarding. And so I started to kind of see the potential that this could have for me and my life and my future. Um, and I really started to kind of just let myself dream. And it had been a while, I think, since I dreamed. I always kind of had an idea of how I thought my life would go, but it wasn't really going that way. But I also had like my dreams in the back of my mind. And a lot of times, you know, people don't maybe talk about them that often because they're like, they're never gonna come true. Or maybe they're shy or a little bit embarrassed about them. Or, oh, if they put them out there and then they don't ever reach them, then is that like, are they a failure then? And dreams are just dreams, you know, they're never meant to be achieved. But with this business and the personal development that I was, I was getting and I was doing and just everything that I was seeing from other coaches around me, I, I started, I started, I don't want to say, I just, I started to get a little bit more serious and, and started thinking that it wasn't crazy for me to want my dreams to become a reality and that it was possible with coaching to make those happen. With my other job, with my other jobs that I had, I, I made decent money. Um, I made actually pretty good money, but I was never going to have the freedom that I wanted. You know, I was, it was always going to be trading time for money. Um, and I all of a sudden was just like not okay with that anymore. I wasn't okay with just having like a okay job and oh, it pays me well kind of attitude, you know, having like okay relationships and you know, everything's just kind of okay. Um and I was I was grateful for my life and but I still wanted more. And I think that's important because a lot of people, I think as women, sometimes you struggle being like, I, I, I want to be grateful for what I have. You know, it's enough. I'm, it's all good. It's good enough. You know, no, you can want more. It's okay to want more. It's okay to have a great job or a good job and a, and a car and a house and kids and a great husband and still want more. It's okay. It doesn't mean you're ungrateful. Like the desires that are on your heart, if you're made in the image of God, I'm a Christian, so I believe in Jesus. If you, and we're made in the image of God, those desires on your heart are the desires of God. They're put there for a reason. And he didn't create you to be mediocre. He wasn't like, oh, I'm going to half-ass it with this one today. No way. You know? Anyways, I'm going a little bit off on a tangent. Let me reel it back in really quick here. So, I just wanted freedom. And back then, it was before I had a kid, freedom to me looked like getting to go to the beach every day. Freedom to me looked like not having to ask my boss for a vacation whenever I wanted. Freedom to me meant visiting my family as often as I wanted, working from my phone as often as I wanted, vacationing as often, often as I wanted. Um, you know, now freedom looks a lot different for me. Freedom looks like having options, having choices. And I'll get to that in a second. But so I just, I started, I really dove in. I committed. I was like, I got serious about my dreams. I got serious about what I wanted. And I recognized that this was the the vehicle that was going to get me there. And so I was like, I'm committed. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And I'm still doing whatever it takes. I haven't arrived by any means. Um, but I have had a decent amount of success. I've been doing this for four years now. So I don't know if I mentioned that before. So I had another full-time job when I started though. So it was, it was a lot in the beginning. Um, and I worked 
all the time. Whenever I wasn't at that other job, I was working. And I realized for not everyone that that's possible, um, but you do have to commit at least some time. Consistency, just like in your fitness, consistency with this business is key. The same mindset that you apply to your fitness journey, showing up every day, doing a little bit every day, and you don't have to be perfect, but you have to do a little bit. The same the same consistency and discipline is in your fitness business. You, it's the same thing. You just now apply it to your business. So you, the activities that someone, that all coaches do are the same, just the amount of time maybe you're able to do it in a day is going to differ. So whether you're, you've been in the business for four years, whether you're shooting to be a full-time coach and quit your job, or whether you're like, I just would love to make a couple hundred extra bucks a month, no matter what it is, you all you do the same activities. It's just maybe you'll just do it for an hour a day versus I'm trying to do it like three to four hours a day. So it's still the same stuff. So I worked in the evenings. I worked before I went to work. I worked at my lunch. I worked in the evenings and I worked on the weekends. And remember, I work not, you don't have to work that much. I did because I wanted to quit my job as soon as possible. And as I started to do it and started to see success with it, I wanted to, it made me push even harder. I got that momentum going and I just wanted to push and push and push. So that's kind of what I did. And within a year, I was able to quit my other job. So, um, yeah, and so I've been doing this full time ever since. And when I say full time, I mean, you just heard me, I work about three to four hours a day and I make full time income from doing that. Um, and so now I have that freedom. And like I said, it looks much different for me with a child. For me now, freedom is a lot more, is less about going to the beach every day, is less about vacationing all the time. Although my son and I do go out to the beach I try to go like almost every day. Every day that I'm at my house, we go. I'm not always here, but, um, which I love. I, we go to the park every day. It's just about choice, you know? Not everyone wants to be a stay-at-home mom. Um, not everyone wants to go to a job, but it's nice to have options. And money gives you options. And that's kind of that's kind of what this does. And what else it can do for you is... And what it's done for me is if I, no offense, I think if I was just a stay at home mom, in my personality, I would go crazy. Sometimes if I'm home alone with Cruz too long, I'm like, this is like melting my brain right now. Like I need something additional for me. I enjoy working. I love Um, the challenge. I love the community of my business. I love making money. Like I enjoy that. Um, and I would need something. So this allows me to kind of have a little bit of each, you know? Um, and it also allows me to fund other things that I'm interested in. So, um, fitness and health and nutrition might not be your number one thing in your life, but what you can do with this is the income you make from this can be the vehicle for other things. So I've shared this before on my page, not a lot, only a little bit because sometimes it's hard to do without coming across as like bragging or something, but I'm also passionate about real estate. I actually have a master's in real estate and I own some rental properties. Coaching, what I've made from coaching has allowed that to happen. So if you have other interests too, it could, it can, provide for those as well. If you want to open a store, you want to start a clothing line, you, whatever it is, you know? Anyways, so what I would love, what I have all my coaches do and I'd love for you to do, and you don't have to do it right now, but like when you think about where you want your life to be in five years, not where you think it'll be, but like if you don't have to tell anyone, but if you were to just dream your own little personal dream, where would you want to be in five years? Like, what do you really truly want? Like, where would you live? What would you do? Would you have kids? Where would they go to school? Where would they go to vacation? Like, what kind of car would you drive? What types of vacations would you do? Like, think about those things that you really want. And don't let yourself be hampered by what is possible based on where you're at right now, because that's not dreaming but really dream and then 
you know, ask yourself is what I'm doing right now, is there a chance that it could get me those things? Cause for me, that answer was no. It didn't matter how hard I was, I worked. There's only so much time in the day um, that I could get there. But with coaching, there is that opportunity because you're not trading time for money. Your income, part of your income is based off your entire team. So you're no longer limited by just being one person that only has 24 hours in a day. Your income is off of an entire team. So the more my team, the more I can help my team be successful, the more I am successful. And we all, the efforts of each other, we benefit each other. The, the, the customers that I get and the coaches that I find that want to join us, that benefits the entire team. And so think of like you're getting paid off one person or you're, you're earning income based off an entire team's effort. That's where this concept of network marketing becomes really, really lucrative. And um, that's like what I see, what I'm looking for. I'm not really looking for people that just kind of want to dip their toe in. I'm looking for people that really want to run with this. You know, like imagine like, having imagine us all you know working together on these goals and getting super healthy and fit together and having a team of women that's like all working together and we you know close friends and we're going on trips together because there's always always there's always all these trips involved when you become a coach and it's just like the most supportive community of fit women ever and everybody wants each other to be successful and everybody helps each other and it's it's, it's awesome. It's unlike anything I've ever been a part of before. But anyways, you have to ask yourself, you know, if what you're doing right now is going to get you there. And if it's not, then maybe it's a good opportunity to look at something like this. Um, okay. That's what I want to say kind of about my story that went a little bit long. So I want to talk about a couple things and then I'm going to run you through a day really quick in what I do. Get my feet underneath me. <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I think they're BS objections. Okay. I understand how objections work. They are fears and we're just, we're afraid of failing. And so we assign these objections to our fear because in our brain we can justify them. Like I used to have this friend. Why don't used to, she's still a friend. She's one of my best friends, Sam. I can call her and tell her something that I do and she will be like, Oh yeah, that's because you did that because X, Y, and Z always makes me feel better. I'm like, Oh yeah, that, that makes it, that sounds good. I'll go with that. You know, it's just a way to justify fear, fear of failure. So things like not being at your goal weight, not having time, you know, being worried that this is some sort of a scam, not having the money to do that. I'm going to touch on each of these, but all of those are really come down to being afraid of failure. And I get it. Cause Please don't think you're the first person to feel that way. I don't know that there's any coach that comes into this that that doesn't pop into their mind. And it won't just happen once, it'll happen again. But you know what? You should just think to yourself, no, I'm gonna fail. And then just ex just know it's going to happen. I don't know if you saw my post, I think it was yesterday or the day before. I shared how after my very first, we have a company, this annual convention every year it's called summit and the very first year I made this big giant goal and I didn't hit it and I didn't hit it the second year third year I didn't hit it the fourth year I have never hit that goal I still have not hit that goal so that means I have failed for four years straight okay but you know what in pushing for that giant goal I hit all these other small goals along the way that forced me to to push really hard and so you know what, when I think about it, I'm like, I only have to fail for five more years and I'm going to hit my goal. Perfect. I can't wait. I can't wait to fail five more times. Cause that means I'm going to hit my goal. So like, you just have to, you just have to know, like you're going to fail at different things, but not in like the grand scheme of things. As long as you don't stop, as long as you keep pushing through that, you'll be, you'll be successful with this. It's all in your head. So if you're using fear, if, if you really do want to do this, none of this stuff should stop you. I'm going to touch on it real quick. Not being at your goal weight. That's bogus. Okay. The most inspiring part is watching someone go on their journey. Sometimes reaching out to the person that doesn't have the six pack ab and the chiseled arms and all this stuff is a lot easier for someone. It, 
some not reaching out to the chiseled person, reaching out to the someone that's still on their journey, that's easier for someone. It's less intimidating. Maybe they're more relatable, you know? When you watch The Biggest Loser, we they didn't show the beginning and then show them at the end and we were all sucked into the show. We get sucked into the show because they show us the journey along the way, right? And we start cheering for them and like we feel connected to them. We're like rooting for them. That's the part. That's the part people love. So don't rob people of that in most inspiring part of your journey. Being at your goal is irrelevant. We're going to start you off with a workout program from our company, Beachbody. You'll start getting your own results that you can share, but having them already is not necessary to starting. Okay. The time thing. You make time for what's important to you is all I can say. Like, here's my example that I always think about. Before I had my son, I thought I was so busy. <laughs> I thought I didn't have time for anything, okay? And that was real for me. That's what it really felt like. Like I wasn't saying I was busy because I, I was lying. I didn't think I was. Now that I have my son, I'm like, oh my gosh, what did you do with all that free time you used to have? And I'm gonna guess if I had a second kid, I would look back right now and be like, Girl, you don't know how good you had it, right? So time is, is relevant. It's all relevant to what's going on in your life. And if you decide that this is a priority for you, you will make the time and you will find that you do have the time to do this. Just like when I had cruise, guess what? All of a sudden I had the time for a baby. Like you will figure out, um, Things will adjust based on your priorities. So that doesn't mean that it might not require some sacrifice. I got rid of all television, which that's not a bad thing. You know, I got rid of television. I cut down on social outings. Like my boyfriend later on, I got another boyfriend at the time. Like he was aware I had business hours and I couldn't just be out all day or whatever it was like. And a lot of coaches on my team, like they talk to their husbands, you know, let them know, like, this is what I want to do. This is what it's going to do for our family. Get them on board. So every day from this to this time, this is what I'm going to be doing with the business, etc. So it's just, it, it will, you, you'll be fine. You can do it if you want to. If you don't want to do this, it'll be a very convenient excuse for you to use. Um, the third one, that it's a scheme, I mean... I've been doing this for four years. I don't know how it could be a scam if how I've been able to sustain my life if it was a scam. So, and then the fourth one, money. So for very few people, I do believe this is real. They truly maybe don't have the money. And if that's you, that's okay. That doesn't mean you can't get the money. So if you are someone that's like, I don't have the startup cost to do this, um, then that's okay. What I would say is like, do you have a budget? And if you don't have a budget, okay, well that right there, you should, you should have a budget, excuse me. And then let's start saving. How much can you set aside a week? $10, $20, $30, $40. Like what can we do? Let's pick a start day. So don't let, just because you don't have money in this moment doesn't need to stop you. It's just, all right, let's put a plan together. It's not just, I don't have money and then we're done with it. You know? So those are the main ones I get. So that's what I wanted to touch on. If you have questions about some other one that I didn't cover, post it below. But again, before you do that, I want you to think, is this really truly like an objection or am I just afraid of failure? And so I'm using this because it sounds good to me. I can justify it. It's convenient, right? Okay. So the last thing I want to run through is kind of, I'm doing pretty good at time. I think I've been talking for 28 minutes. So I wanted to keep it like under 35. So I'm going to share with you what I do. But first I need a sip of water. Okay. Obviously showering daily is not part of the job requirements. <laughs> I just want to keep it real for you guys because honestly, some days it comes down to me sending invites to people or me showering and... I would rather work my business. I know that sounds crazy, but like when you see what this business can do for you, like it's hard sometimes to pull away from it, to be honest. Um, like you got to set boundaries sometimes. But anyways, so I had this coaching event today, this call, and I wanted to make sure I, I sent messages to people. So I didn't get a, I didn't get a shower in. That's how it goes sometimes. Um, so this is what my day looks like now, which is different than when I had another full-time job. 
And I will let you know, most people when they start coaching have full-time jobs and have kids. So please don't let that like stop you. That's how most people start. It's not, it doesn't mean that you can't do this, okay? Busier people, like busy people always make the best coaches because they are the ones that have to get more organized. They're usually more organized people in general. Um, so like I'm going to run through today. So this morning, my alarm went off at 530. Okay. I woke up. I brushed my teeth. and I won't go into that much detail. I took my Energize, which you saw me do my stories on. Or maybe you didn't, but I did my stories. I took my Energize. And then while I waited for my Energize to kick in and before I worked out, I checked in my stories and saw who new people were that looked at my stories. So maybe a couple new people. And I sent a few messages to them. So there's, I usually just get a few new people a day. I checked on Instagram, checked on Facebook, and usually after I do that, it's time to work out. So then I did my workout. I videoed some of that. I shared it. Um, I did not get a shower in. Um, I sent a few more invites to people to join my group. And the invites I sent were to people that I had maybe had conversations with before. And I wrote their name down as someone that I thought might make a good coach or sometimes I just invite people because I just think they seem cool. And I'm like, I want you to be on my team because I kind of want to hang out with you like in real life and I want you as a friend. <laughs> so I sent those invites and then Cruz got up and then he got up at 7.15. So that was it. Um, then I played with him. My phone's off while he's up. I try not to get on it. Um, and then he went down for his nap at 10.15 and then I got back on my phone. Uh, excuse me, I got back on my computer and I sent some more messages to people. Well, actually, I take that back. First, I checked in on my group. So I run challenge groups, we call them, every single month, like an online boot camp, virtual wellness group. They're, you can call them all different things. But um, I checked in on those girls. I always do that. I check in on them usually two to three times a day. Um, they're posting. Right now, we're focusing on a Miracle Morning Mindset. It's after this book, The Miracle Morning, which is a really good book, by the way, if you haven't read it. Just kind of helping them create a morning routine that is going to help them be energized and productive and just start their day off better. And so that's what we're doing this week while we wait for this brand new program that Beachbody has that's coming out next week. While we wait for that to come out, we're focusing on everybody getting up a little bit earlier and every day, every morning, we kind of have a set routine that we do. So I check in on them, I comment, see what they're posting, comment on all their posts. Then I go back to my computer and I message maybe people that like my post saying thank you. Um, I might send a few more invites to people inviting them to this new program. Um, sometimes I send happy birthday messages to people. It's all just kind of ways to start conversations. I'm giving love to people, liking people's stuff, commenting on their stuff, and then responding to anyone that maybe liked my post or commented on my post from the day before. Again, I'm just, it's just a way to start conversations with people. That's what I'm really doing here. And I know that that might sound a little bit scary, like, oh, I don't wanna put myself out there. I was that way too. But once you start doing it, it's you're like, it's not really that hard. It's not that big of a deal. Like, and it's necessary. Like, if we're talking about achieving a dream life, you have to do what most people might not do. Because you are going, you're working for a life that most people will never get. Not even close to getting, okay? So if you want that dream life, then you have to do some of the things. You have to get yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone sometimes. But it's so rewarding, I promise. So anyway, so that's what I did during his first nap. And then we played. And then during his, then I took him over to his dad's and for his second nap and that's when I got on Instagram I messaged people new people that followed me I got over back on my computer on Facebook I did all my follow-up so people that I had made a note we had spoken in the past I made a note to check back with them I checked back into my coach team page I checked again to my challenge groups to see like new comments new activity going on in there um, and then I sent some last minute invites more people to join this call and that was my day um, and there's sometimes there's some trainings I listen to or a call I listen to. Oh, in the car, that's when I always listen to my personal development. So a big part of coaching is developing yourself. It's, you know, you're, we develop ourselves physically when we do our fitness and health and that stuff. But the biggest part is your mental and emotional health. Um, and like 
who you are right now is not who you need to be to achieve that dream life that we talked about, but you will grow into that person that is capable of doing the things you need to do to, to build that dream life. Like so many of the things I do right now, like still kind of blow my mind that I do them. The old me would have never have done them, but I'm not that person because I've read 50,000 personal development books and listened to a million audible personal development group books and attended conferences and trainings to help me grow as a person, as a leader, as a mom. Um, and they've helped me become the person that I need to be so that I can do the things and lead the team to help others to help myself, if that makes sense. Um, and then when I get off this call, what, le what else do I have to do today? Um, I'll probably send some more messages to people. Um, I do a lot of messaging in case you can't tell. And so if you're a coach, when you join, you'll do these same things. You just might not do as many as I do. So in the beginning, when you first become a coach, we'll get you started with your own fitness and nutrition program. Your, your health is always number one, always has to be number one. Cause that's where you're going to get the confidence. You're going to feel good. And it's going to make you want to work this business. Um, we're going to have you set up with a little bit of training. So in the beginning, some of your time is invested in training, kind of learning a little bit about the business, um, learning kind of some of the systems and how it works. You and I will have a one-on-one -on -one call. Um, and then you will eventually start running your own groups as well. Your own challenge groups. You'll be sending your invites, creating those relationships, You'll, a lot of the people that are in your groups um, will happen what happened to me. It will happen to them where they fall in love with the program and they decide they want to pay it forward and share it with other people and they want to become a coach. And so your team will grow as well. And that's kind of how this all works. So I'm getting close to my time. I think it's at 35 minutes right now. <laughs> so I don't want to talk too much longer. Like I said, I'm going to share... A video as soon as we get off this call and it'll go into a little bit more kind of a little more details about what we do um, a little bit more about how we get paid and a little bit more about next steps but basically if you wanted to come check this out you can always cancel or return your stuff if you decide if you wanted to do this and then you decided it wasn't for you you could just decide I'll just be a customer or you could cancel the whole thing and get a refund. But what we would do is I would we'd order you something called a challenge pack. It comes with your workouts, your nutrition, your superfood shake, and I would add you to my private client group. And then you would join us for this next new program that's coming out. It's a 100-day program. It's a HIT. It's a combination of HIT, weightlifting, cardio, core, every style it seems like is all in this program. And you would join us for that. And um, I get you started with your coach training shortly after we started that program. So that is what we, oh, and that would be $150 to do that. Okay. So if you have any other, I'm going to leave it there for now. Like I said, I hope that you will join this, give it a try. You really have nothing to lose. There's no risk, especially since you get, you can get your money back. If you already have, are in one of my challenge groups and you're watching this, like, and sweet, you're ahead of the game. You already got that part starting. You started. So we can skip that part and move right on to coaching and start getting your product paid for. Um, there's no reason you start, can't start making money in your very first few weeks as a coach. We'll have a one on one call to talk about your goals and I'll kind of set you up with, okay, if those are your goals, then this is the action plan we need to do to get you there. So we'll go through that together too. So send me a message after we get off here and let me know um, if you would like to give coaching a try, what your goals are. I always want to hear what are people's goals? What do you want to get out of this? Um, and we can chat and figure out next steps. Okay. And if you have any other questions that don't, I didn't cover in this post them below girl and I'll get back to you. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for being on. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time. I hope you got some good stuff out of this. And if you decide to do nothing, no biggie, we could still be friends. All right. Bye, guys.